Yeah, I know. If I had an extension cord, it'd be awesome. No, I'm saying not that you usually have a power strip on the side or the overhead. On the side. On the side? That overhead. Usually, like, mounted to the cart. Oh, that's right. Uh, eventually, I'm going to stop talking anyway, so I shouldn't have enough juice to, <laughs> to give me for the first part here. Um, so hit me again. So we just have a question. Uh, 9.6. 15. Oh, So obviously, hold off on questions from the ones I'm covering today. Okay. So hit me with that again once we get, once they stop talking about it. So we'll, we'll do the problems. Don't let me forget. Um, completing the square. Uh, The nice thing is, if you have a problem like this, if you have a, if you have to solve an equation, you're allowed to do things to both sides now. So what is it here that completing the square can't handle? Five. The five, right? It's built on there being a one out front. So I don't have to pull a five out and do all that weirdness with put a four inside. It's actually twenty. I can just kill a freaking five directly. I've got two sides. The zero will eat the five up for lunch. So this dies x squared. And then we bring a negative two fifths over. Is that cool? Subtract two fifths over, get it out of the way. I purposely made this kind of disgusting, but I want to show you how it's really not that bad. What are the two steps to complete this square? Good. So eight fifths <coughs> in half is four fifths. And then squared. Yeah, four fifths squared, 16 20 fifths. So where's that 1625 fist go? Yeah. And then the four fist goes. Oh yeah, it goes on the other side too. Cool. So there. There. And the four fists, the nice thing is, I mean when these get really disgusting. Thing. You just look over here, these tell you that's what you got to add to both sides, that's how it's going to factor. No thought required. We've already done the thinking here. So it'll be x, it's actually negative, isn't it? You gotta be careful about that. x minus 4 fifths squared. And then on that side, you just have to do what? Common denominator. LCD. In an LCD, yeah. So times 5. Negative 10, 20 fifths, and 6 20 fifths. 60, so, so, six <laughs> That's oh, yeah. Yeah. so why does I, I don't know, how many of you guys think that, uh, I mean, anywhere I have two fractions in actually I gotta get LCD. But it seems like everybody thinks that everything changes whenever we learn something new. That 1625th is from the new completing the square. When I added to both sides, so obviously I gotta need an LCD to put those things together. Not everything is brand new. Now what do I do from here? Well, of course there is. Have I got to the point where x equals the numbers? Radical. So I know I'm not done. Put a radical. Where's your x? Why is it stuck? So because it's stuck inside of a square. Uh, How do you kill the square? Uh, of course, the minute you put a square root down, yeah. well, plus or minus, make that absolutely uh, habit. It should be second nature to do that, trust me. Especially going on pre-calc, you've been doing that all over the damn place. So why have that be habit? So you get x minus 4 fifths equals plus or minus. What could I do here? It's the square root of 6. I don't know. It's the square root of 25. Right. Okay. So x, <coughs> add the 4 fifths over. Bam. Even if I ask you to do something about completing a square, it's not a damn thing wrong with on a scrap paper doing quadratic formula, whatever you feel more comfortable with, just to compare it to what you get. If you get something totally different from the way that you did it that you feel more comfortable with, you're like, oh shit, I made a mistake here probably. All right? It's a time issue though, but if you got time, do it the way you're comfortable with and check against the way I ask you to do it. Nothing wrong with that. All right, how's that? Is that? That was a rather ugly problem. Well, 
E. Oh, on the practice test? E. Uh, no, no. The oh, on the test. test. Domain of G. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, what's wrong? What, where would this have problems? What can't be? Don't be specific. Just tell me. Where would that have problems when I'm dealing with domain? For, for us, what does domain imply? It implies it's got to be real numbers, right? So here, what can't happen? Less than zero. Yeah, the inside can't be less than zero, right? It's got to be greater than equal to zero, blah, blah, blah. Why? Specifically, why? Because what's the square root of negative 9? Well, we know what it is now. It's 3i, but is it real? No. So domains are all about real things, at least for us. We're going to talk about complex domains. Thank God. That's for much later. When, we, when I say domain, I mean real numbers. What makes real numbers happen? So this, this isn't real. So the inside can't be negative. What's the cube root of negative 27? Negative 3. So can the inside of cube roots be negative? Hell yeah. So if I have a cube root of anything in here, you know, x plus 7, whatever, does the root have any restrictions? The inside can be 0. The inside can be negative. The inside can be positive. Are there any restrictions? No. And the inside itself has no restrictions, right? So what's the domain of this? There's no restrictions, so the domain is all real numbers. Right? There's, oh, the domain only changes from all reals if there is a restriction somewhere. Here there's a restriction. The inside can't be negative. Here there's no restriction. If it was a fifth root, eleventh root, odd roots are laid back. They're like, cool, negative, positive, I don't care. Right? It's all about equal rights for negatives. Right? Cool. You guys get that? So a lot of you guys... And you guys, you see where I wrote down odd root, trying to point you to the fact that you don't have to worry about it. It's an easy problem, actually. It's an odd root. The only time you'd have to worry is if I did something evil like this. The odd root, so I know there's no problems here, but on the inside, I've got this. What would the domain of that be? Where's the only restriction coming from? The root doesn't have any restrictions. Can't be negative 7. Can't be negative 7. All real numbers except negative 7, right? Because the only restriction is not here. The restriction is, oh, it's here. That's where the restriction is, right? If there are no restrictions, it's all real numbers. Cool. Yeah. Oh. Um, 12E. Oh. Um, I wanted to give you that question in a different format than you're used to, but... <coughs> What, what kind of function is h? You all have basically x squared minus or plus something. Mm -hmm. So let me just make one up there. Nobody had that. But it's fine. That's what kind of a function? A couple answers y'all said. What kind of a function is that? Parabolic. Parabolic. I like it. Quadratic, which would graph as a parabola, right? So what do we know of the range of a parabola? Does it, does it go all from negative infinity to infinity? No, at some point the parabola turns, right? Mm -hmm. So how low does this parabola go? Because it opens up. So how high does it go? Forever, infinity. So you know this side is infinity. You're just trying to figure out what that side is, right? What's the lowest this thing goes? Minus 10. So there are a couple problems in the homework exactly like that that gave you the image or whatever, but it's the same idea. Here, the lowest it could be is negative 10, and it goes up to infinity. Because what would the vertex of this be? What would the vertex be? And again, if you want to, you can write this as x minus nothing squared minus 10. Now it's easy. Yeah, so it could be 0, negative 10. 0, negative 10. So that must be the lowest. Negative 10 must be the lowest output. And it goes up from there, right? Cool. So if I would have said um, negative x squared minus 10, what would change? It goes down. It goes down. So now the, the floor is undefined. The floor goes to uh, negative infinity. And it goes up to negative 10. 
because now it opens down. Now, how are you knowing it's, it's closed bracket? Oh, because at negative 10 is definitely an output. Okay. I get it when I put a zero in. So I want to include that. Okay. There would be a closed circle on that vertex. It's not just me seeing if you can answer a question you're used to answering but in a different context. Here's a function, what's its range? Well, it's a parabola. It's got to figure out the vertex and go, is it open up or down? From the vertex part, forever up, or from negative infinity up to the vertex if it opens down. You've had to do that in the homework a few places. Um, any other questions from, yeah? Um, number 76 and 9.6. 96 number 70 70 all right so that's that's another one don't let me forget what was it let me collect these 9615 right Tamara? yeah and 70 okay i'm collecting those because i haven't talked uh, about 96 yet yeah um for the test three number five number five, five. oh yeah um I don't ask you to re-derive where this came from. But does everybody know what that means? What is that? That's how to find the x piece of the vertex, right? Remember the whole thing I went through to explain, you know, if I draw that, can somebody kind of roughly tell me where the vertex is? It's going to have to be right in the middle here somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see it here. But if I tell you that there are x-intercepts at this point and this point, the vertex must be directly, in the middle, right? So, like a lot of you guys actually drew it out, and I loved it. And you kind of counted in from both sides, and you got it. I love it. Or just add them up, divide by two. Some of you guys actually made a function up, which technically isn't right because you have no idea if there's a seven out there or whatever, or if it's even negative. You don't know which way it opens. But I liked the. Um, I liked the creative approach. It was, it was great. I love it. Um, 3E. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So when you have uh, two complex numbers dividing, that one right? Yeah. How do you divide those? What do you have to do? Multiply, Multiply by the uh, conjugate, the complex uh, conjugate. Cool. I saw way too much. Let me change the numbers there a little bit because on the test I had numbers like uh, 8 minus 4i over 2 plus 2i. <laughs> a lot of people were telling me, oh, that's 4 minus 2i. Mm -hmm. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Come on, I don't do that. You can't break into an addition or subtraction problem, right? I desperately want you guys to just feel like, what? That's crazy. Trust me, your calc, your pre-calc teacher, you're going to pre-calc, is going to be like, what the hell is this shit? <laughs> that should be a basic, like somebody saying, yeah, seven plus three is two, of course, and you're like, what? Okay. Um, yeah. Well, how do you find the inverse of a function? What are the steps you take algebraically? So if I had uh, uh, if I had this, how do I find the inverse? Yeah, switch the x and y. So, so a few of you guys switch the x and the y, and then you stopped. And I guess technically you might say you're right. <laughs> but I need to know what f inverse of x equals. You have to solve for y. That's all you do. Just switch the x to y, solve for y. What am I doing here? Oh, there's a minus. So add the 8 over, take the fifth root, add the 2, right? So add the 8, take the fifth root, add the 2. There you go. You guys can do the steps there, but once you switch the x and the y, it's just solve for y now, and that's relatively simple. 
And it makes sense because if I do that and I start solving for y, I'm undoing everything that was being done before, am I not? So that's why it should make sense that that's going to end up being the opposite function, the inverse function. What number was that? Oh, 12C. Yeah. So I gave you, you had a cube root function that you had to find the inverse. You do the same thing. All right, so let's do this. Let me finish out chapter 9, talk about 10 a little bit. We'll totally focus on reviewing for the final. You guys could do test corrections. You could work for the practice final, whatever you want to do. Um, they are not like terms. So you can't just say I got negative one log base A of mx or something interesting. Right? They're not like terms. But I do have properties that tell me if I have the subtraction of two logs, what to do with it, right? Oh, cool. Thank you. Hmm? Oh, just not yesterday. Well, I don't know what kind of got in there, but it was in there. Okay. Thank you. All right. Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, so I know what to do if I have log base B of something minus log base B of something else, or do we? What, what, well, how can I rewrite that? I'm subtracting two powers. When do I do that? When I, what? When do I subtract powers? When I'm dividing. So I'll be x over y. So that's how I can remember these properties. These are exactly the same properties as powers because logs are powers. But what's kind of in my way? So if I know what to do, I have log minus log. I know exactly what to do. I don't have that. I have two logs minus three freaking logs. What can I do about that? I don't have any like terms up there. Oh. I like it. So another property that we know is that when do I multiply two times a power? When I'm raising it to that power, right? I know I multiply when I have something raised to another power. So the shortcut there is to bring that two back up. The funny thing is, look at two log a m by itself. Isn't that log base a of m plus log base a of m? True? Yeah. Of course it is. I got two of them. There they are. And what's, what do I do when I add two powers? That must mean I'm doing what with these? Multiplying. Multiplying. What's a, m times m? m squared. So the shortcut is just put the two up there, right? Because that's what would happen if you actually went through the trouble of writing it all out. So screw that trouble. Let me just put the two back up. All right? So all these, po all these properties are kind of like self-contained. Uh, just like the, powers of, uh, the properties of powers are self-contained. There are so many different ways to do it, so many different orders to do it in. But they all kind of came back to itself. They all have to kind of come out to the same answer at the end. So I'll put the 2 back up there. I can put the 3 back up there. And now I know when I have log base A minus log base A of stuff, what can I do with the stuff? 
I subtract powers when I divide. So that's applying properties of logarithms to simplify something. Here in a minute, we're going to show how to apply properties of, po of powers of logarithms to solve equations. Um, before we get there, though, I want to show you two number, things. Uh, number 45, instruction 94. Oh, yeah, somebody else asked me about them. So 45 is going the other way. This is from section 94. Um, I think we did this one. I can't remember now. They won't like it or something. Well, the really funny thing about this one is, well, we'll see. I could actually simplify the top of this if I really felt like it, but um, they just asked me to pull this apart. I want this as the, I want to pull this all apart. So if I have log base A of one thing, log base A of one thing, right? I don't want to have log base A of this big monster. So the very first thing I want to do when I have logs, I want to rewrite any radicals as powers because what do logs work well with? What are logs? They are powers, right? So if I rewrite all my radicals as powers, that's going to make all this stuff a lot easier. Now, there are a couple of different approaches you can take to this. And actually, it's not a bad idea. This will get you to the same place. It's probably a little quicker if you distribute this one-third through. I don't know if you guys remember. Last time, I, did, I took that one-third down first. But at the end, I had to distribute the one-third all the way through all the coefficients. I'm probably doing a little too much here at once. But let me see if I can do this real quick without having to do it twice. Um, if I had log base a of x to the sixth, what would come out? What could come down here? The sixth. So isn't the six a power? But can't it be written as a coefficient? So if I take the one third through right now, I'm multiplying all those by one third. If I take the one third down first, and then eventually take these powers down, don't have to distribute the one third through, and they're going to hit all the coefficients. I'm going to get a freaking two there, no matter what I do. So that's what I meant. There's so many different orders to do things in, but it doesn't almost matter. They're all got to come back to itself. It's all got to come to the same answer at the end. It's got to. So the easier way to do it probably, I think, is to bring the one third through first, especially because if some of these are nice. What's x6 one third? x squared. I gave that away earlier. Three times one third, one. Here I get two thirds, right? And here I get. 7 thirds. So the first step is actually not even new. I'm just distributing a power. And then what can I do with like uh, the thing I always do first? Well, because this gets a little freaky. Both of these are down here, right? The thing I always do first is log a x squared y. This is dividing between those two, right? So what can I do? <coughs> when I divide, I Twice. subtract power. So log base of the top minus log base A of the bottom. Now people always do this uh, property at the wrong times. You can only, if you have a log of a division, I can make it the difference of two logs. Because when I divide things with the same base, and you guys see how this is exactly the properties of powers. When I divide things, with the same base, I subtract the powers, right? The same way you say the property of an exponent is the way you say the property of the logarithm. It's exactly the same. Now I can look at each of these separately here. What do I do when I multiply things with the same base? How can I break this up? Add it. So when I multiply things with the same base, I add the powers. Here's where everybody makes a mistake. What mistake am I making if I do? If I multiply things with the same base, I add the powers. Is that A? Were they evil? Not a little bit evil. Okay, that's fine. I've made a mistake just there. 
a mistake that I made. And if you really want to see it, it's because of that. I'm subtracting this whole thing. So if I rewrite this thing in any way, I better still be subtracting that whole thing. Otherwise, I'm subtracting a piece of it, and that's a neat trick. I right? can't do that. And the last thing you could do, really, you can bring the negative through, but that's not a big deal. The last thing you do is take those powers down. So you're going to have problems that are like this, where you consolidate, and that's more like what we do in mathematics. You try to get stuff together. And then you have problems like this, where you pull it apart. And sometimes that's useful. Sometimes. So what can happen is this two can come down. What happens here? What's the law of base A if A is over two thirds? Two thirds. And then minus seven thirds comes down. Log base A is Z. As long as what I just said makes sense, and then you can kind of hold on to it, make it make sense later. That's the trick. Now again, uh, you guys kind of see why I was trying to not rush, but not take my time in earlier sections is because this kind of section needs some more thought into it. So I'm not going to be very heavy on these kind of problems in the final because we didn't get enough time to really practice with these. There will be at least one problem like that. I'm having a hard time with once you simplify it. I understand that you distributed the negative through the bottom. Yeah. But if, if I would if I were to see that initially, I would see that that minus seven thirds log base a uh, z. 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 <laughs> I would think that that would be dividing by the two thirds. Dividing by this two thirds? Yeah. But if you're cool with this step right here, they are separate, right? Yeah. So this is two thirds. Right? Because mm -hmm. log by say an a to a power cancel. <coughs> right. And this, so plus and actually minus because of minus, yeah. this guy. And the seven thirds comes down. Right? The seven thirds power comes down out front. That's one of the I properties. I got the property there. Cool. But what I'm saying is is if I were to see the minus two thirds minus seven thirds, I would rewrite rewrite. <laughs> I like <laughs> rewrite that as dividing in two thirds. I understand. Subtraction Subtraction does not mean division, right? Subtracting two logs can be rewritten as the log of a division. It's a property of logarithms. Mm -hmm. So this is not a log. It's a, it's a number. And numbers don't have that property. Logarithms have that property with other logs. Numbers don't have that property, right? So if, if, the, if the log base A had canceled out with, with the A two-thirds, yeah. Would you would you continue to write it with the parentheses? You could then there? do like a division, but but then you'd be going backwards. Then it was a division. I'm trying to undo it. Okay. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, it, never mind. I know what you mean. <laughs> yes. But it would be kind of going backwards from what we want to do. I'm okay. trying to break it back up. So it's a lot like um, the problem people have when they see this: um, the cube root of 27x cubed. I get a lot of people that tell me the answer is this. No. What went wrong there? Cube root 27 three. is? Three. Three. Where do you think they got the 9 from? Three, three. Nine. three goes into 27 nine times. Because they get, well, you're like, well, well, you do 3 into 3, Jeff. <laughs> you dork, why are you making things difficult and different? No, this is a power, this is a number. They don't have the same properties. This is a log, this is a number. They don't have the same properties. and it's. I don't want to make it sound like, well, come on, but I mean, what I'm trying to really get you to understand is it has to be consistent. Numbers do certain things, logs do certain things, powers do certain things, they don't have to be the same because they're very different things. They don't have to do the same stuff, right? So this shouldn't be that. This is three, three goes into three once, and we're all cool with the fact that we do kind of approach these differently. If I wrote this, as three cubed, then it's the same. Now they're both powers. They should be the same, and they are. Let's try and be a three. Three goes into three once. Cool. Okay. 
said a minute ago, um, I could go ahead and just do what this says to the logs, but I've got stuff I can simplify here. So this is what I this is what I mean. I don't know if you guys really understand what I mean. When we did exponents, there were a lot of different orders you could do stuff in. You could do stuff on the inside and then bring the outside power in, or you could bring the outside power in first and then do it, right? There are a lot of different ways to do it. Here, I could do this first and then simplify these together. Or I could simplify this by itself and simplify this by itself and then try to put them together later, right? There's a lot of different approaches. Personally, what I would do is I like to consolidate the crap here and then attack that directly. Right? I, don't like, I don't like to break it up and have a lot of logs running around. I just like having <laughs> one log to worry about. So here's log base a, a squared of x. Minus tells me what I have to do with these. I subtract powers when I divide. Can't I just, if I divide by this, can't I just say this, just to make it a little bit easier to look at? Oh, okay. Is that cool? Yeah. Dividing by, because I don't want like a fraction over and thing. You could always do that. I got to take this divided by this because of the property of logs, period. Mm -hmm. But the, dividing by something is multiplying by its reciprocal. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I'm following the property. So what can I do from there? On the top, I get A. What do I get on the bottom? X squared. Yeah, square root of A X squared. X squared. What's the square root of X squared? X squared. Is that cool? The X squared comes yeah. out as an X. Square root of X squared is X. What's the big thing in this problem and kind of clues you into, you can go further than maybe normal with letters. The fact that the base... Yeah, I'm trying to, I kept trying to simplify, I'm like, hey, where can I simplify and get rid of those A's? We're almost there. Okay. <coughs> now I want to do, like I was saying earlier, I don't like square roots, I like powers, because logs like powers, don't they? Logs love powers, that's what they are. So how, what a, how many a's do I have now? What's a divided by a to the one half? What's this? What do you do when you divide? You subtract. subtract. What's one minus a half? Where did you get the one half? Hmm? Oh, so it's a square root. So that's a to the one half. Oh, okay. And then this is an understood one. So a whole a divided by half an a is half an a. Let me see if you guys can do the next step. How could you do, what would the next step be? Uh, Addition. Subtract. I'm dividing these two oh, dividing things. So what I do with the powers? Dividing this and this so I can subtract the powers. All right. When I'm dividing the stuff, I can subtract the powers. So whenever I say power, replace it with the word logs. When I'm dividing this stuff, I can subtract the logs. Because logs are powers, right? So all the properties of powers are the same. You just replace the word power with log. And what's really the last thing I can do? What is log base A of A to the one half? One half log. One half. Okay. Yeah, that one looks, well, I did a little bit longer than I maybe had to, but I just want to see all the steps. But uh, it, it is a little bit longer than you look think when you first see it. Oh, oh, 
this is the section where they tell you. Oh, actually, you don't need that for that, do you? No matter what they tell you about log base B crap here, what is log base B of square root of B? That's that one, right? You might get thrown off. At the beginning, they tell you log base A of um, 3 is 0.792 and blah, blah, blah. They tell you all the crap at the beginning. And some of the problems need that, right? This problem doesn't need it. How do you do this problem? What, do you sh what should you do first? Yeah, rewrite the screw root as a power because logs like powers. They play well together. Log base B of B to the. And we just did a problem like that. The log base B and B to a power? One half. One half. Another way to look at that is um, can't this one half come out front? Right? What do you raise B to to get B? What do you raise B to to get B? One. First power. So one half times one is one half. That's a longer way to go. Is this, that's another way to look at that, what happens there. what you need from it. Um, do you guys know where pi comes from? From the baker. <laughs> Did I tell you in this class at some point where, where pi came from? You divide the circumference by the... Beautiful, base. right? Any size circle, this circle, this circle, cut the earth in half, that circle. If you take the circumference divided by the diameter, you will always get the same number. 3.1419, blah, blah, blah. And, and civilizations throughout history were all freaked out about that. Right? They all were going, how the what? So that was some, you know, it was obviously some natural, incredible thing from the gods. And, and so they gave it a symbol. They gave it the symbol pi, because, you know, everybody likes pi. So this is where the circumference formula comes from. Multiply by d, don't you get pi d? Isn't that the <coughs> circumference formula? Okay. <laughs> or 2 pi r, because we know d is twice the radius, so 2 pi r, if you like that one better. All right, so you're all like, okay, Jeff, what the hell has this got to do with logs and crap? Well, the thing about um, exponential growth, remember this, how I talked about this? I said, they even say this, put two rabbits in a room, give them some food, wait a while, and wah, you'll have a lot of rabbits in a few months. Um, the thing about exponential growth is a number keeps popping out when I start observing growth of systems and then trying to fit it, trying to actually put a line through them. A number keeps popping out, especially in, uh, well, one place it popped out is, is if you do investment. If you actually invest something and it continuously grows, like every millisecond, it makes money and it puts the money back in. It makes more money on top of that, it puts the money back in. So it's always like putting money inside of itself. Whoa. The number, it keeps popping out, the same number, 2.71282, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't keep going 2828, by the way. It's, just, it's like pi. It doesn't have a pattern to it. So that kept coming up and kept coming up, just like that thing kept coming up and kept coming up. So they give it the letter E. Oh, my God. Okay, that's the E. Oh, that's the E. It's not I'm like, why is it? This is E. <laughs> so if uh, 2 to the X is this, and 3 to the x is this, e to the x, of course, would be somewhere in the middle, right? Because e is somewhere in the middle of 2 and 3. The reason I made this section extra credit is because I don't care if you can graph e to the x. You can do it on the calculator. 2.712 blah, blah, to the third power is not easy to graph. So screw graphing it by hand, right? Uh, and it's nothing really new. It's just another, I can do any number I want to to a, letter, to a variable. I could do 1.98246 to the x and have that be a function, right? So e is just a number to the x power. It happens to be one of the most important bases I could use, and it comes up a lot. Um, what's the inverse of this going to be? 
So let me not freak you guys out too much. What's the inverse of 2 to the x? What's the inverse of 2 to a power? What would kill 2 to a power? It's not squared. Uh, what's log base b of b squared? Why? Because log base b and b to a power cancel. Why would they cancel? Because they must be what kind of functions? Inverse. Inverses. Inverse. Inverse functions cancel, right? Mm -hmm. So let me try this again. What's the inverse of 2 to the x? X raised to 2. Negative 2. Log base 2 of x. What would kill the 2? What's log base 2 of 2 to the x? Oh. What is it? Two. X. X. Then the log base 2 and the 2 cancel? What happened up here? Didn't the log base b and the b to a power cancel? Yep. Log base 2 and 2 to a power, they cancel, leaving you with x, right? So the inverse of 2 to the x is log base 2 of x. The inverse of 3 to the x is log base 3 of x, so forth. So on the, on the test, I had you guys graph 3 to the x plus 1 or something like that, and you have to graph the inverse, which is actually a logarithm, isn't it? The inverse of an exponential is a logarithm. So if there's one thing you get out of here, maybe not that, but if there's eight things you get out of here, that should be one of them that these are inverse functions of each other. That's the whole point. What's one reason why I can know the opposite of a function? And this is kind of getting ahead a little bit to the next section, but if I know a function, I have to know its opposite so that I can solve equations, right? If I knew addition, but I didn't know subtraction existed, I could never solve this equation, ever. I couldn't solve it, right? If I don't know if subtraction exists, I can't solve that. Too bad for me. But if I have this equation here, this one's easy, but one way to officially solve that is to do this. Now I can attack that forward right. I can solve for x, right? I know the opposite of 2 to the x. I know the opposite is log. So I've got to know the opposite function. All right, so let me bring this back in. So just to remind you guys. So if I have uh, 10 to the x, What's its inverse? Yeah, understood 10 there, right? Is that cool? I'll, I'll write it down. I'll never write it there again. No, nothing there is understood 10. Because our number system is 10. Uh, so if I have e to the x, I'm about to write something else that I'll never, ever write again. Ever. If you ever write this, your teacher will look at you weird. Never write this except maybe in your notes for right now, but you never write this again. Wouldn't the inverse be log base e of x? Mm -hmm. You will never see that anywhere. This is given its own special symbol. Oh, God. This is the ln. ln yeah. And think about this. If e's describe population growth, natural population growth, its inverse should be a natural logarithm. That's what really the ln, the ln actually stands for even more than that, but shorthand is basically natural log is what it's called. This is called the natural log. I know a lot of you guys have tuned me out already at some point, but if you're with me still, I appreciate it. This is all new shit. Doesn't mean it's hard, just means it's new. What I really want you to get is this should be easy. If I ask you for the inverse of 7 to the x, you should be able to tell me log base 7x. The inverse of e to the x is the same thing, it's just a different symbol. That means this. That means this. Do you guys see that on your calculators? Yes. Mm -hmm. You've seen the ln? Yeah. It should be right below, I think it's below or above the log. log. Oh, there it is. Okay. Cool. And what's right above ln? E to the x. I love it, because they like to put functions and their inverses together like that, right? Okay. So your calculator is a note. <laughs> What's the inverse of E? Well, look at your calculator. Oh, it must be ln, because it's with it. Just like log and the Yes, exactly. Yes. What does it mean when the number is in front of the log? Oh, when you have a coefficient? When you have a number, yeah. Like if I had just like 2 log 3x, like that? That just means twice that. It's the same thing as saying 2x squared. I would put an x in here, get something, and then double it. 
I'll put an X in there, get something, and then double it. Cool. <coughs> now this does mean a little bit more. I can rewrite this, of course, as log base 3 of X squared, right? Because that's a property of logs. But just the, that coefficient means the same thing it always does. Just double whatever that is. Cool. Um, oh, and here's the important thing. I think I told you guys, somebody figured it out, but I don't know if all of you have figured out how to do just a general log in your calculator, log base 7, log base 1.8, whatever. Um, so if I had log base 7 of uh, 61, and I actually wanted the exact, you know, like a, not the exact answer, but an approximation, a decimal approximation for this. We have no way to do it. We have a log button, which is log base 10. We have an LN button. We don't have a log base 7 button. So here's the nifty thing. Here's how you actually do this. Do I know what this is? I love this. No, so let me call it, uh, let's actually call it, let's go ahead and call it X. I've done this a few times in this class. It's a really neat uh, tool. I don't know what the hell number that is, so I'm going to call it X. That's what we do in algebra, right? Well, how can I rewrite this now? Um, seven. 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 <clears throat> yeah, 7 to the x. x equals 61. And that's not very useful, is it? I still don't know what the hell is going on. Here's the cool thing. What function has a property where the power can come down, but is also on my calculator? So what function? has a property where power can come down, and of course, what function is that? What kind of function is that? Where the power can come down? Come on now, what's the only function we know where when I apply it, the power can come down out front? A log, any log, right? Any log, any log you take. If I have log base pi of x to the seventh, what can I do with that seven? Pull it down, right? So here, if I take any log I want to of each side, I can bring that x down. And why is that so good to bring the x down? I'm trying to solve this again for x. I'm trying to figure out what the hell x is using something my calculator understands. So my calculator has no clue what the hell log base 7 is. But it knows log. It knows ln. It knows those two, doesn't it? So if I can just rewrite this, if I can just resolve for x but use ln or log instead of log base 7. So what we normally do, and the one that's normally used by math people, let's see if you should figure out why. We like to use ln. It really doesn't matter, like I said. Because what property does every log have? That power can come down. Why do you think people, math people like the ln more than log base 10? It's one less letter to write, really. <laughs> that's it. It seems pretty cheap, but oh well. That's the way we are. So how can I solve for x? Divide by natural log 7. So natural log is 61 divided by natural log is 7. Now real quick, I'm going to ask you to do this in the calculator. Be careful. I think it opens a parenthesis. You better close it if it does, right? Can somebody give me an estimate for this? What number would I have put there that I could actually do set log base 7 of? Yeah, like 49 would be 2, right? So it's got to be in between 2 and 3. Because 7 cubed is uh, 343. Right? So it's got to be in between 2 and 3. So let's try to do this in the calculator. What's natural log of 61 divided by natural log of 7? 2.112 or 2.11, blah, blah, blah. I like it. So this is actually, the funny thing is, what was the base here in the original problem? What's the base? What have I rewritten it as? A base of what? What's understood? The ln has a base of? That's log. Has a base of? E, right? Ln has a base of E. Ln goes with E like log goes with base 10. So that, that function's inverse is there, that function's inverse is there. You guys see that? 
in general, this function's inverse is log base a of x. It's just that when it's 10, we understand it's a 10. It's the most used one. When it's an e, we call it natural log, just because we wanted to make stupid jokes about natural log cabins. Google that. There's stupid jokes out there about that. I can't do anything about it. So, what the hell good is this? Well, and what do you think we call this stupid thing? We call this the change of base formula. Now, look how easy this stupid thing is to remember. Base on the bottom. Base goes on the bottom. The number goes on the top. Right? Base bottom. Other number on the top. So, if I had, for example, log base uh, 3 of 0 0.074. How can I rewrite that? I don't have a log base 3 button. I can rewrite that as ln, ln of what, what? 3 on the bottom. Uh, yeah, base on the bottom, three. the other number on the top. You can do it, Jeff. There you go. And then just plug that in the calculator and go to town, right? So it's called the change of base formula. So to put it into a form that my calculator understands. And you actually use it to rewrite log in any base you want. Obviously, when you want it into a base, my calculator can do. Right. Do this for me. Anybody doing that in the calculator? What do you get for that? Remember, if it opens press, you better close it. Negative 2.36. Blah, blah, blah. So, did you guys get it? I think since 3 to the negative 2 would be 1 ninth, which is 0 0.111, and so a little bit more than that would make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, do this now. Log 074 divided by log 3. Do that. Real quick, if you came in and didn't get the stuff back that I handed out, make sure that during the break you come up and get it. Cool, there's some important information. You guys get the same damn thing, hopefully, right? Yeah. Of course you do. You can use whatever freaking log you want to here. Because all I wanted was any logarithm that will take that stupid x down. I hate, my variable is stuck. And we had this a whole damn semester. My variable is stuck. What makes it free in this case? Any log. Why did we use that one? Because it's the smaller one that my calculator understands. That's the only reason we use that one. I could have used log base pi if for some reason that was my favorite. Right? So of course it's going to work no matter what log I play, but these two are the two that my calculator understands. I saw a hand somewhere. But I like that. I just keep talking over it and the question goes away. <laughs> That's excellent teaching. Um, Okay, so a 9-6 is the last one I want to talk about for real, and then I'll talk a little bit about 10. Um, and it kind of builds off of what we did here for 9-6. You got my email right, Frank? Yeah, All right. I just took the phone. Cool. All right, take it easy. Um, let me think. Oh. First thing is, let me ask you guys this. This, this, will be, this will be almost too easy, hopefully. What would x be then? You guys see how it's got to be 4? Ain't nothing else you can put there to make it the same as that, right? Base is the same, the powers have got to be the same, x must be 4. That's one step away from this kind of problem. Of course, that one's really easy because what would x have to be? Why? Because 16 is 2 to the 4, so x would have to equal 4. Mm -hmm. Right? Which is one step away from, let me see which my markers is still alive. This kind of problem. Oh, you're dead. 4 to the x equals 8 uh, to the x minus 1. I like it. <coughs> It should be three. So now watch. This means 
Can't I rewrite these both as a base of 2? What's 4 as a base of 2? Two? 2 to the 2. second power, right? Mm -hmm. And 8 is 2 to the 